just before we start the video, I just want to do a quick one. I hate doing these things at the beginning. I've never actually done it before. But only 70% of you are actually not even subscribed. Uh, only a small percent of you are subscribed that watch my channels. So it would be a massive honour for me if you could actually just like this video. It's just that quick five seconds of just pressing that thumbs up and also clicking the subscribe button and you can ding the bell if you like if you want to watch every single episode or not and i promise you that these three will be getting an upgrade in the future so thank you so much for taking that little quick time out with me and then on with the video hello and welcome to Cinturons corner and today we are going to be upgrading sev so this is the new republic commando out from gaming greats at the moment and um, yeah, as you can see, he really, really needs a good sort of a, a little bit of a good makeover. So previously, a little while back, we did actually do boss from the Republic Commando. We added this black collar around on here, a few extra extras and some sort of elbow pads and other details as well. And this guy is no exception. He actually needs quite a lot more. So as you can see, I've taken off his backpack and these parts. So these will get a little bit of love, as we always do, to fill in those sort of chips on this part but this guy actually has like some kind of um, device on his shoulder pad and also he has some ammo pouches here on his shin guard so I'll put a little image up on the side here hopefully this one's probably the best one I'm going to go by it's actually from the actual um, the Republic Commando game which is obviously what these guys are really based on so then you know there shouldn't be anything near or par from different to them so how am I going to make this? Well, I've actually picked up a bit of this, which is actually a R2-D2 from a Bandai kit. It's actually like a when you open up his little front parts of his sort of barrel chest, so when something pops out through. So I'm going to use this as the kind of like display unit on the top here. And I originally I was just going to slit in two holes and then that would slide in. But it actually looks like he's got a mini laptop on there. So this is where this is going to come into play. I've actually got two bits of clone trooper belts. I think it's actually from my original Captain Rex. I know it's blasphemy, isn't it? But I'm going to cut off these two sort of ammo clips here uh, as close as I can. And then those two are actually going to fit onto there. The other part, once I've got those attached, you also need some kind of uh, belts to go around. So they're attached around his leg. So I'm going to use the milliput for this part. So we've used this before get a combination of both on each part of here, mix them together and then we'll make two little snakes that are wrap around his leg. And then the other part for his elbows, it's just a bit of a, a laminate sheet here that's gone through the laminate, so it's all hard, but it's flexible if that makes sense, you know, so it's it's not, you need to put it through the machine first to get to this sort of stage and it's really nice and easy to sculpt anything. So as you can see, the original elbow pads that we made here for Boss is still in the shape so it's kind of like this shape here take them off glue it on and then paint them up to what they should actually look like on his arm so we get rid of this part probably move the kneecaps down as well so he's got a lot to go through but it sounds a lot but not too much but also don't forget we're going to be using nail varnish remover which is your acetone because we're going to get rid of most of this paint that's actually on the figure as well because it just looks a little bit nasty i'm going to go through other paints that I'm going to use on here are MIG Ammo or Ammo MIG. This is blood red, so this is what I'm going to do. I might even go over every single part that is red already with this paint. We've got Cyan Blue, which is going to be used for his display on his visor and on his chip parts on, on his backpack. The good old gun metal that we always have. And then I have Ocean Grey, which hopefully will fit in with these parts. And I also have White as well for the Ammo MIG, which we're going to add on these extra details so this is all we're going to use i'm going to explain what i'm doing through the actual video itself so don't worry about writing all this down at the moment we'll do it in sections of each part so i guess without further ado let's upgrade this bad boy so we're going to start with his ammo pouches that are on his shin and i'm just going to cut these off the uh, clone belt that i have just have a look around in your fodder box, see what else you can use, it doesn't have to be these, it could be other components. Be calm and listen to the music, and don't forget to hit that like, subscribe and ding that bell. Thank you. So 
now using my grate I'm just going to paint these little ammo pouches ready to dry so we can actually place them onto the figure. Next up while your ammo pouches are drying off we're going to take some acetone be careful with this don't get it too much over the figure but just as you can see here on these shoulder pads he's got bright blue we're going to take all that off but don't take it off too much look at this picture on the side here and this is the closest picture i could find to the actual game sev uh, and he has a little bit of like a dry brushing of blue so literally acetone away but just leave a little bit of residue there on the side and at the back uh, just to, so it displays that it kind of has been weathered a little bit. Next up, I'm just going to acetone off the red smear on the top of his head. It just looks awful the way they've done it. It just looks a little bit too factory-like. So I'm just going to take this off as well. Uh, just keep using extra bits of Q-tips and stuff on there. Don't spread that red over too much. Just get new ones and really push a little bit for harder and firmer. And it'll really get that red up really nice and easy. So next up, just nice and easy, grab the gun metal and we're going to paint his gun with the gun metal, obviously. So now we're going to add his shoulder mounted sort of flashlight that he has there. So grab anything around, anything you can think of. It doesn't have to be this little R2-D2 thing. I just kind of thought it was easy to grab and it's got those little tab parts that you go in there. You can actually not even do it to be honest because even some Sev uh, kind of reference pictures on Google don't even have it either. But what I've done is just cut two little holes in there so I can push the tabs down, uh, cut the tabs down a little bit thinner so they're not too big. And once in, I just glue it into place and we're ready to roll. While that's drying and the paint has dried on our ammo pouches, we're just going to attach those to his shin. So now we're going to start with our milliput. Don't forget you need equal amounts of both, uh, but don't forget when you actually do combine it together, it's actually going to generate double the amount. So just make sure that you use just as much as you need to. Uh, warm both parts up first, then combine them together and then make it a nice consistency colour because if it doesn't, it will go a bit powdery and it won't set properly. Once done, leave it to one side, go and wash your hands uh, and let it set for about 30 minutes. Uh, because it become a bit easier to uh, manipulate with the, with the actual uh, milli putt. So I've left it to one side and while I'm doing that I'm just going to paint the actual shins of the figure with the blood red that I have um, because it needs to go further up um, and let it dry and then we can actually put the milli putt on afterwards. Alright, so now the milli put is kind of sort of setting a little bit. Um, I'm just going to sort of cut out the little belts that I need to wrap around his shins. You need two parts of this, 
and then once it's done, leave it for four hours until dry. For this part as well I decided to strengthen up the flashlight so I put it down a little bit of milli put on there and I've used the end of my knife because obviously it's kind of round I can actually sort of bow it around so it kind of looks like it slopes up to the flashlight on there. Next up we're going to use the black and we're going to fill in that whole U part of his upper armour uh, just to bring in that kind of big deep neckline that the uh, commander troopers have. Also using the black, we're just going to go around the top part of the gun a little bit on the back of his head so he looks like he's got a black brow like the clone troopers and stormtroopers have. Now that your milli put is dry and you have left it for four hours, we're going to paint it with the gun metal. So I'm going to paint the whole flashlight with it and obviously the milli put parts as well. Looking at the picture, it kind of looks like he has like a band that holds on the uh, flashlight onto his shoulder bell. So I'm just going to paint that on there with the gun metal. Other parts you can use the gun metal once you've done the flashlight. Use that part on the other strip on his shoulder bell to give it a bit more consistency with the figure and make it a little more realistic. And also those little nub bits on the front of his helmet there uh, just to give it a metallic look. So now we're going to go back to that sea grey and we're going to fill in and paint those milli put straps that we have done. Now they have dried. As I repeat, make sure it is dry. With that sea grey as well, I decided to paint his whole upper torso as well. I just don't really like that plasticky look and this will give it a bit more of a kind of realistic look and the paint when we put the red on there will sit better as well. So now we're going to paint his kneecaps. I did repaint his kneecaps and then took the paint off because I was using it without reference pictures. And uh, now I have a reference on the side. Uh, so just splodge a little bit of red paint on each sort of panel part. So the sides and then the front shin. He kind of has sort of like a V shape, kind of a bit of the chipping and stuff. But it's up to you on your weather. You don't really have to use these sort of pictures as inspiration. I just use it as a nice guide to keep it official. So next up we're just going to put some blood splats and stuff and the elong the stuff that's been on there officially. You don't need any masking tape, you don't need anything like that. It actually looks like splattered blood. So you can't go wrong really. You can either put more or you can put less or just keep it more in line with the picture. It's entirely up to you.
So looking at his braces, as you can see, the actual red on that part is more pronounced and thicker. So I'm just going around and thickening those up on his arm as well. So now I'm just going to put a little bit more sort of red on the top of his upper arms. I'm going to connect the two bits that there officially and then along it around, around sort of the front as well so you can see it a little bit more. Now for the red on the torso, using the uh, picture again as inspiration, it's just a few little blotches and stuff on there. So I'm just copying that picture as I do. So now I'm just going to fill in the paint that's on the front of his faceplate. Um, so yeah, just look at the uh, image here. It's kind of swept over to one side and I'm just copying as I go from there. Many others look like handprints and other bits on there. Um, so I kind of sort of kept it as much as I can to the image. I couldn't really find much reference for the backpack so I'm just covering that red or the white lines that are on there because they look awful so I'm just going to cover it up and then put my own more red blotches on it and my own weathering as well using the gunmetal just going to fill in the digital display and then put the scion blue over the top for the buttons so using the scion blue as well I'm not going to completely cover the actual visor I'm just going to leave a little bit of the original colour around on the outside and do this bit from in the middle. So it's just a slim line T that I'm doing in the middle there. Before the cyan completely dries, I'm actually using a little bit of white and it'll bleed into it and it'll lighten it up as well from the inside out. So it kind of looks like it's got some visual kind of light coming from it. So now using the white, we're just going to white off his shoulders, as you can see in the picture here. And I'll do the same on the back as well, because that's what I'd imagine it would look like. So now while I'm still using the white, I'm just going to go around on that sort of grey torso and add some white chipping as well. And then sprinkle it around on over the other red parts as well that we've actually added to the figure. Just to give it a bit of chipping and sort of carbon scoring and you know, our traditional weathering that we do like for our clone troopers. I'm also using a dry brush here with a bit of white on there so it's just literally getting a bit of paint on that dry brush brushing it off all the excess and just leaving a little bit on there and just scraping it over certain areas and where it is a little bit raised it'll catch the brush and leave some white specking.
So now I'm just going to put in the torch marks here, and this is using the cyan, and I'm just going to put some sort of these long semicircle, sort of long fingers in there to replicate the kind of lights that are coming off, and then just fill in with a little bit of white on the side just to make it look like they are illuminated. So now I'm just cutting out the uh, shoulder pads or the elbow pads, shall I say, from the laminate part here. And once I've done that, I'm just painting them white, uh, let them dry, and then we will glue them onto the actual arm pieces as well. So now the figure is mainly completed, we're just going to go around with a dry brush and black. I'm not actually going to do a black wash on this one, I think sometimes it takes too much away and I like to be quite precise with my sort of like weathering and stuff. So I'm just putting it around in certain areas or on the sort of bits that are raised or behind. Uh, just make sure you get those cheekbones, all the sort of like lines and stuff in the helmet. It really brings out the detail and makes it look ten times better. finished and done and not too bad to be honest i mean hasbro what was you thinking at the beginning it was absolutely awful and now i actually feel like i have sev on my desk and um, he's looking pretty cool as well and can you imagine if hasbro actually bring out a figure that's this a detailed they would just put the sort of like a black series back on the shelf while other people are leaving it alone at the moment so yeah not many materials used for this guy in all, really, I don't think. Uh, just a few extra kind of blood bits and sort of, it's kind of sort of like elonging what Hasbro already gave us, in a way, to be honest with you. So first of all, what will we use? We use Milliput on here, so that's why it's taken a little bit longer, because you have to wait for it to cure. And we have actually put an extra bit on here, which we don't normally do in our customs. Normally it is just generally painting anyway. But first of all, the paints that we have used, the main one here is Ammo Mig. This is blood red, and it's actually a really nice um, blood red, to be honest with you. It, it matches what was already on Sev, and it's given that kind of sort of glossy, kind of like blood, kind of stained look on there, which isn't too bad. The other one that we have used is Cyan, and obviously that is for his screen. Uh, his little sort of technical lights and stuff there, the ones on his backpack and stuff as well. Then adding a little bit of white, brings up that sort of brightness so it actually looks like things are glowing in a way so we've done that on the lamp and we've done that on his visor and the white is done for his chipping and his shoulders as well the other parts that we can never do without is gunmetal and we've used that all on his sort of silver parts and on his gun 
and on his kind of torch light up the top here. Another really key paint in this one is Ocean Grey 2 XF82 uh, RAF Tamira. And I always rave about this one because it's a really good sort of imperial grey. You know, like Stormtroopers have that kind of line on the back of their helmet and stuff like that. It's a really nice matching colour, to be honest. So we have redone his old torso in that paintwork as well, just to take away that kind of just mundane looking bland plastic on there we used bl flat black which is for all the the black parts that we have had to do over and then we have done a black wash on the figure as well well actually more of a dry wash i didn't actually do a black wash on this one decided not to i just wanted little patches and little bits around so it kind of looked a little bit more carbon scored we had used the part of the actual paint that was on here by using the acetone as well getting rid of that kind of paint on there just sort of not too much just so it actually gives off that weathering look on there because he has got blue on his shoulders so using that we can go through it and obviously we have used loctite glue in many places especially on his elbows uh, on, on a sort of torch part there making sure it's in place and I've also updated since the video I've done his knees so now when I bend his knee down it actually goes down on this part I've not actually done this on Boss yet, so I'll do a comparison. So with Boss, his one's on the top knee, and this one's on the lower knee, so it actually looks better. What I did was just literally peel it back and then just used a knife straight down, and then take away whatever access you've got left over. Just make sure you don't put the knife through the kneecap part here. Uh, trim it up and then black this part once it's all done. Just glue up to this sort of nub bit, and that nub bit, just fill it onto that end of this shin pad and that's what I've done here so you can see the nub bit is just literally down there and uh, it's just latched on and glued onto the actual shin and all I had left was this little part here for her, his knee so yeah now he's actually got working knees which are on the lower leg rather than the upper leg so looking a lot better so looking through the actual detail on here it's kind of hard like, there's so many I've, I said before like there's so many illustrations of this figure that you look at one and it hasn't got these parts on it and you look at another one it has another one looks like it's got a handprint here another one's got handprint up here it's got blue shoulders it's i mean i, I imagine cosplaying it is probably insane trying to find an actual kind of one so I've, i based it as near enough i can to the actual computer game it kind of looked like some geonosian kind of blood stained handprint was at the top there so i've kind of done it a bit of a a wish wash across that way rather than the straight upness on there uh, so it kind of looks like it's smeared across his face uh, and then we just elonged all these other red, red parts around and doing the other dashes and stuff thickening up the arms and then down on his legs as well and thickening up that, those sort of paint bits on there and the chips uh, sorry about the noise but i've got the windows open it is scorching again in the uk today it's literally i'm just sweating out especially with <laughs> these lights bellering down on here i'm literally just melting away uh, all my figures are falling off the shelf as well because they got so hot and all their limbs have gone loose but um yeah thank you so much for joining me in this one i really enjoyed this one and now we've got these two and now we've just got to wait i think fixers next and then we've got scorch further down the line but um yeah loving them too i actually might even update this one a little bit more because i think some of his weathering is not enough but thank you so much for joining me on this one don't forget you can comment down below subscribe ding that bell follow me on instagram uh, it's all really high appreciated and if you could actually like maybe share the videos as well uh, get it out there and if you have enjoyed this video and reached it to the end please just leave a like so thank you once again and i'll see you next time bye